In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Besides being the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, the Church commemorates today the octave of all the saints. Providentially, the text of today's epistle illustrates in a wonderful way one of the chief ends of the veneration of the saints in the Catholic Church. The Church venerates the saints in her litur liturgy for several ends. <clears throat> to render due honor to those who have heroically practiced the Christian virtues, to present to the faithful accomplished models of those virtues so that they may imitate them, and lastly, that they may avail themselves of their powerful intercession before Almighty God. <clears throat> These ends, though distinct, are wonderfully connected. For to contemplate their glorious and blissful reign in heaven naturally excites us to want to learn the way in which, in which eternal glory is obtained. And this is, of course, <clears throat> the practice of the Christian virtues. <clears throat> and since these latter cannot be practiced without the help of grace, the contemplation of their virtues leads us naturally to ask the help of the saints in our struggle to practice them. <clears throat> now, of the many advantages we derive from the veneration of the saints, St. Augustine says emphatically that the most important is the imitation of their virtues. And this is no wonder since the Church presents them to us as models. And the very idea of a model is that it be a pattern upon which to shape our own conduct. Besides, the very end and purpose of our life here on earth is that we glorify God by doing perfectly His will, or in other words, by our own sanctification according to the words which the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost utters by St. Paul. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. <laughs> this is succinctly and admirably expressed by St. Louis de Montfort when he addresses us in these words. Soul, <clears throat> living image of God, and rendered and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The will of God concerning you is that you should become holy like him in this life and glorious like him in the next. <clears throat> the acquisition of the holiness of God is your sure vocation, and it is to this that all your thoughts, words, and actions all your sufferings and all the movements of your life must tend, or you will resist God by not doing that for which he has created you and is now preserving you. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, what an admirable work, dust, <clears throat> dust change into light, dirt into purity, sin into holiness. <clears throat> admirable work, I repeat, but very difficult in itself and impossible to mere nature. It is only God who, by his grace and his abundant grace, can bring it to pass. <clears throat> Sanctity or Christian perfection is then, as our saint calls it, our sure vocation. <clears throat> and hence we must imitate the saints that we also may achieve perfectly our goal, our goal, as they did. In a word, we must follow the saints as our models. And this is precisely what St. Paul teaches us in the epistle when he writes, <clears throat> Be ye followers of me, brethren, and observe them who walk so as you have our model. 
This is one of the reasons why, according to St. Alphonsus de Liguori, among the different kinds of spiritual reading, the lives of the saints is ordinarily one of the most salutary, if not the most salutary and beneficial for the soul. The holy doctor, writing a rule of life for someone aiming at perfection, says, he may also read other works, but let him, above all, read the lives of the saints. In the books that treat of spirituality, we see virtues in theory, while in the lives of the saints, we see them in practice. And this will stimulate us more efficaciously to imitate the saints. Saint Philip Neri continues the holy doctor, never cease to exhort his penitents to read the lives of the saints. How many saints, such as Saint, Saint Ignatius of Loyola and Saint Teresa, have been induced by the reading of such books to consecrate themselves entirely to God. <clears throat> Hence, it is most profitable, a most profitable custom to read every year the life of one saint at least and to read every day the life of the saint of the day, even if it be a single page account, such as those in the famous pictorial lives of the saints, which take le less than two or three minutes. For a longer account, one can read their lives in Garanger's liturgical year or in the abridged edition of Butler by Father Bernard Kelly. But to return to the epistle, the apostle gives us the reason why it is so important that we imitate him and the other saints who followed his steps. For many walk, he says, of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. It is as if he were saying, Take heed that you learn carefully how I act, that you may pattern your life according to me, and not according to the many who reject the cross, in taking which alone is there any hope of salvation, according to those words of our Savior. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross, and follow me, for he that will save his life shall lose it. <laughs> returning, to, returning now to St. Paul, he then adds, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Here the apostle clearly teaches that those who refuse to take up the cross and live rather according to the flesh, minding only earthly things as opposed to heavenly or spiritual ones, shall suffer eternal damnation. To which he, con he contrasts his own life and that of his true followers, saying, but our conversation is in heaven as if he said, our life is heavenly because even though we are in the flesh and are weighed down by the law of our members, which fights against the spirit, nevertheless, we do not live according to the flesh, but we resist its disordered promptings. And this the apostle explicitly says elsewhere, for the flesh lasteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to another. And they that are Christ's have crucified their flesh with devices and concupiscences. From whence also we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
This means that our conversation, our affection, our heart is in heaven, where our Lord and Savior is, and from where he will come soon to, to judge us and reward us with eternal life if we persevere in keeping his law. <clears throat> and even though we chastise our body by fast, abstinence and mortification, in doing good, let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap. Who will reform the body of our lowness, made like to the body of his glory. If, after the example of St. Paul and all the saints, we mortify our bodies for the short time of this life, for the love of Christ, when he returns to judge the world, he will raise us up in, the, in this same body we now have, but endowing it with the wonderful endowments or gifts of the glorified bodies, enumerated by the same apostle elsewhere. Impassibility, brightness or clarity, agility and subtlety. Impassibility will exclude all corruption, all suffering and all pain. Subtility will enable our body to penetrate another body as Christ entered through the doors of the cenacle, even though they were closed. Agility will render our bodies capable of the quickest, the quickest motion, and brightness or clarity will make our body become luminous with a supernatural light of indescribable beauty. <clears throat> Saint Bede the Venerable remarks that in this the goodness of God is shown, that he decreed that the time of trial, this life, be very short, but the time of perfect and ineffable bliss, eternal. <laughs> A few days of moderate effort and an eternal reward awaits us, where our happiness will be so perfect and our heart will be so utterly filled with ineffable and sweetest joy in God that it cannot be expressed in words. As it is written, the eye hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man, what things God hath prepared for them that love him. Let us then imitate the saints in practicing the Christian virtues for just a few more years, and soon we will enjoy with them the eternal, overflowing joy of heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.